A short summary of why we sleep, by Matthew Walker by the Inner Revolution, saving you time on your journey to wisdom. Subscribe to our channel for more free audiobook summaries now. Walker states that sleep is universal in animals, even in insects and worms. These deep biological roots suggest that sleep is a vital function and that it isn't simply a vestigial byproduct of evolution. At least one study disputes the claim that sleep is a vital function, showing that a certain type of fly is virtually sleepless. The findings of the study thus present a different perspective when it comes to the biological role of sleep. Part 1. How Sleep Works Walker begins by discussing the mechanisms regulating sleep as well as the human sleep cycle. Sleep Rhythm He explains that there are two mechanisms that regulate sleep, the circadian rhythm and adenosine. 1. Circadian rhythm regulated by melatonin, produced by the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain, ic the natural wake drive, which responds to light and darkness and thus makes you stay awake during the day and wanes at night. In the first edition, Walker had written that every living creature on the planet with a lifespan of more than several days has a circadian rhythm. In his blog, researcher Alexei Guzzi underscore says that this is false, brewer's yeast, which lives for more than 20 days, does not go through this cycle. Walker addresses this point in the second edition by changing the phrasing to most living creatures on the planet, emphasis hours. He also clarifies in his blog that there are exceptions to the mentioning mammals that don't seem to have a circadian rhythm. 2. Adenosine, a chemical that causes sleep pressure, or the increased desire to sleep. It rises consistently throughout the day without sleep. Sleep naturally happens when your adenosine is at its highest and your circadian wake drive is at its lowest. In the morning, your wake drive starts up again and your adenosine has been depleted by sleep, you feel awake because you've reduced the adenosine circadian gap. Walker says that this explains an odd phenomenon, pulling an all-nighter and getting a second wind in the morning. Your adenosine keeps rising, so when your wake cycle dips at 3 a.m. the gap is larger and you feel tired. But at 8 a.m., your wake cycle restarts and closes the gap and you feel more awake. It's best to avoid pulling an all-nighter, but if you must, you can minimize the disruption to your sleep routine by keeping yourself awake until your next bedtime. Stay hydrated, and resist the urge to take a long nap, stay active, chew gum, or smell rosemary, peppermint, or coffee to help keep you up. What happens when you disrupt your rhythm? Too much sleep disruption can lead to a sleep deficit, or the difference between the amount of sleep you need and the amount of sleep you get. This comes with unpleasant symptoms such as drowsiness even after sleeping and a lack of concentration. Keeping a sleep diary can give you a clearer picture of your sleep habits, making it easier to determine any problems. Fill in your bedtime, wake-up time, length of time it takes to fall asleep, number of times you wake up and for how long, and caffeine and alcohol consumption for at least one week, then review the data to determine underlying causes of sleep disruption. The human sleep cycle. Your brain, your brain switches between two types of sleep, rapid eye movement, REM, and non-REM, NIM, sleep. Walker explains that each type has different functions. NIM, characterized by slow electrical activity in the brain, clears out old memories and mental trash, and moves information into long-term storage. REM is characterized by faster, frenetic brain waves. It strengthens the valuable information that remains, and it forges creative novel connections between them. During REM sleep, your sense of time is dilated, you consciously perceive your senses, and you experience muscle atonia, your voluntary muscles are completely limp, to prevent you from acting out your dreams. Walker indicates five stages of sleep, one stage of REM and four stages of NIM, but other sources such as the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the Sleep Foundation, and the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke say there are four stages, NIEM1, the point of crossing over from wakefulness to sleep, NIEM2, when your heart rate slows and eye movements stop, NIEM3, deep sleep, and REM, the dream state. How sleep changes from childhood to adulthood. Babies, during the last two weeks of pregnancy, fetuses get up to 12 hours of REM sleep a day 
which helps build neural pathways throughout the brain. Alcohol impedes REM sleep in fetuses and babies, thus disrupting the construction of neural connections. Walker suggests this is connected to autism. Short form note, a 2020 study found that sleep difficulties in infants who were later diagnosed with autism may be linked to a change in the size of the hippocampus, a key part of the brain related to learning and memory. So far, studies have only found a correlational, not causal, relationship between sleep difficulties and autism. Childhood NIM plays a larger role in brain refinement, pruning the associations that are most valuable and unique to that child's life. Short form note, NIM sleep is vital to a child's cognitive development so it's important to manage sleep disruptions like bedwetting. An estimated 25% of 5-year-olds wet the bed at least once a month. Teens, they are wired to stay up later and wake up later. Unfortunately, modern day school start times aren't in sync with teen circadian rhythms. Short form note, one study found that adolescents with parents set bedtime schedules got more sleep and were more alert and less tired during the day. Adulthood and old age sleep quality starts deteriorating in your late 20s, with deep NOM sleep becoming impaired in length and power. By age 70, you'll get 90% less deep sleep than you had as a teenager. Short form note, the National Institute on Aging says that older adults needing less sleep is a common misconception. Older people still need 7 to 9 hours of sleep a night. Part 2, The Importance of Sleep In this section, Walker covers the benefits of sleep and how sleep deprivation harms you. The Benefits of Sleep He says that getting good sleep improves your brain in three ways. 1. Sleep improves long-term factual recall by securing memories for the long-term and clearing out short-term memory to make room for new information. Sleeping for too long may have an interesting effect on memory, as in the case of a man from North London who was in a coma for three weeks. He woke up with memories of things that didn't really happen. One possible theory is that his brain was trying to fill that three-week gap with made-up memories based on real memories that he had stored. 2. Sleep prunes memories worth forgetting. Short form note, a 2019 study on mice found that melanin concentrating hormone, MCH, Neurons help the brain forget unimportant information during REM sleep. This could help researchers better understand and possibly come up with treatments for memory-related diseases and disorders. 3. 3. Sleep increases muscle memory or motor task proficiency. While Walker writes that it's connected to NOEM sleep, the division of sleep medicine at Harvard School suggests that motor learning is linked to REM sleep. How sleep deprivation harms you. Walker goes on to explain three ways that sleep deprivation is harmful to the brain. 1. Sleep deprivation worsens attention and concentration. Performance progressively worsens with greater sleep deficit, which is especially harmful for those who are performing high-risk activities like driving. Short form note, in the original text, Walker wrote that there are more vehicular accidents caused by drowsy driving than by alcohol and drugs combined. He has since removed this vague claim from the book and revised it to include statistics, saying it's hard to objectively quantify the number of accidents due to drowsy driving versus driving under the influence. 2. Sleep deprivation worsens emotional control. Walker says that when you're sleep deprived, your amygdala, the part of your brain that controls emotion, can run amok, leading to 60% more emotional reactivity. Sleep disruption is a common symptom of all mood disorders. However, sleep deprivation actually makes one-third of depression patients feel better. Guzzi notes that Walker downplays the benefits of sleep deprivation. Studies suggest that it's beneficial to about 45-50% to of patients with depression. Walker clarifies that these findings emerged after the book was written. 3. Sleep deprivation may contribute to Alzheimer's. Sleep loss may disrupt memory formation as well as the glymphatic cleanup system, which clears out Alzheimer's associated plaques. A study suggests that sleeping decreased the chances of developing Alzheimer's and other neurological diseases. Diseases linked to sleep deprivation in addition to the damage it causes the brain, 
sleep deprivation disrupts the normal function of many physiological processes, likely contributing to the following. Heart disease. Diabetes. Obesity and weight gain. Reduce, reduced reproduction, by affecting hormones and attractiveness. Some cancers. Aging. Reduced athletic performance. Death. A note on the studies in Why We Sleep. Many of the population studies cited in Why We Sleep are correlational, for example, their results show that people who sleep less are more likely to have heart disease, after controlling for many other factors. But the causation of these results is unclear. Some other factors that predispose people to heart disease, like a high baseline level of stress, could also reduce sleep. To address this, the experimental studies Walker cites attempt to link lack of sleep to a middle physiological state, which itself is causative for the disease. For instance, a lack of sleep increases blood pressure, which the medical consensus believes is causative for heart disease. Ideally, the smoking gun experiment would be to randomize people into normal sleep and low sleep groups for years, then observe the rate of disease. However, this is impractical, it's hard to run very long studies like this and impossible to double blind, and likely unethical, if low sleep is already believed to cause severe disease. Part 3 the science of dreams. Most vivid dreaming happens during REM sleep. Walker says that your visual, motor, memory, and emotional areas of the brain are active. Your prefrontal cortex, governing rationality, is muted. Some people are even capable of lucid dreaming, meaning they're able to voluntarily control their actions within their dream. Short form note. One study found that you can increase your chances of having lucid dreams by combining three techniques, reality testing, breaking up your sleep, and mnemonic induction of lucid dreams. Benefits of dreaming and REM sleep. Walker says there are three ways dreaming and REM sleep are good for you. One, REM dreaming blunts emotional pain from memories. The brain seems to reprocess upsetting memories and emotional themes in a way that retains the useful lessons while lessening the visceral emotional pain. Short form note, Walker attributes this only to REM sleep, but neuroscientist Rebecca Spencer posits that NIEM sleep also plays a role. Two, REM sleep increases your understanding of other people's emotions. Sleep-deprived people more often interpret faces as hostile and aggressive. Short form note, this works both ways. While sleep-deprived individuals view other people more negatively, other people also view sleep-depraved people as more unpleasant. Three, REM sleep creates novel connections and a higher level comprehension of ideas, and increases your ability to solve creative problems. Short form note, in fact, it may be possible to manipulate your brain to solve problems during sleep. Part 4, The Current State of Sleep Walker finishes by covering sleep disorders, sleep disruptors, and ways to get better sleep. Sleep disorders He explains that there are three sleep disorders that people commonly experience. 1. Somnambulism, sleepwalking the act of walking and performing other behaviors while asleep. It happens during NIEM sleep. Short form note, a 2021 study suggests that men who sleep walk risk of developing Parkinson's disease. The two share a common neural pathway and both involve involuntary movements, confusion, and amnesia. 2. Insomnia, defined as making enough time for sleeping, but having insufficient sleep quantity or quality, for more than three months. The most common triggers are emotional concerns or, dist or distress. Short form note, researchers suggest that physical and emotional stress from discrimination in the workplace and financial pressure due to unemployment, for example, may be the reason behind the sleep disparity between people of color and white people. 3. Narcolepsy and not awake, not a sleep state marked by three symptoms, sudden bouts of extreme sleepiness, sleep paralysis, waking up in REM sleep during muscle atonia, and cataplexy, sudden loss of muscle control while awake. It can be hard to diagnose narcolepsy because its symptoms overlap with the symptoms of depression, hypothyroidism, sleep apnea, and epilepsy, among other conditions. What stops you from getting good sleep? Walker names jet lag as an increasingly common sleep disruptor. 
it affects travelers by disturbing the circadian rhythm. He says it can take you up to 10 days to readjust to a 10-hour time difference. Short form note, there are several ways to minimize the effects of jet lag, such as hydrating adequately and exposing yourself to natural light at your destination. He says that even those who aren't traveling face five major influences that have drastically changed how we sleep. 1. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors, thus reducing how much you feel the desire to sleep. If you can't shake the habit of drinking a hot beverage late in the afternoon or evening, try herbal teas that may help promote sleep and relaxation. 2. Light Nowadays, artificial light constantly fills our homes and disrupts our circadian rhythm. Blue light is most problematic, suppressing melatonin at twice the levels of warm light. Blue light may have an even bigger impact on children, as they are more sensitive to light and have bigger pupils. 3. Constant temperature In modern times, thermostats homogenize temperatures, suppressing the biological systems that use temperature changes throughout the day as sleep cues. Short form note, if it's too hot and you have no access to air conditioning, Call your body temperature by avoiding exercising at night, avoiding anything spicy, and stashing your pillowcases in the fridge. 4. Alcohol, a sedative that causes what appears to be sleep but is really more like anesthesia. It causes you to wake up throughout the night and prevents you from getting REM sleep. Walker encourages total abstinence from alcohol. A less puritanical approach comes from the Sleep Foundation, who recommend that you underscore stop drinking alcohol at least four hours before bedtime. 5. Alarms cause acute stress responses when you wake up, spiking your cortisol levels, heart rate, and blood pressure. One study suggests that changing your alarm from a jarring sound to an upbeat song can help combat sleep inertia, that disoriented state you're in upon waking up. How to get better sleep. Walker provides a number of tips on how you can start getting better, less interrupted sleep. Keep the same waking and sleeping time each day. Erratic sleep schedules disrupt sleep quality. Practice sleep hygiene, lower bedroom temperature, reduce noise, reduce light. Avoid alcohol, caffeine, exercise, or long naps before sleep. Get some exercise, which may increase total sleep time and increase quality of sleep. Exercising has more of a chronic effect, meaning it helps in the long run and doesn't take effect on a day-to-day -day scale exercise on one day doesn't necessarily lead to better sleep that night. But worse sleep on one night does lead to worse exercise the following day. Eat a normal diet, not severe caloric restriction of below 800 calories per day. Avoid very high carb diets, greater than 70% of calories, since this decreases NIM and increases awakenings. Avoid sleeping pills, they're no better than a placebo. For those with insomnia, try cognitive behavioral therapy, which has been shown to be more effective than sleeping pills. More tips to help you sleep. In the sleep revolution, transforming your life, one night at a time, Oriana Huffington devotes a chapter to sleep tips, tools, and techniques. While there are many overlaps with while we sleep, such as limiting blue light, avoiding alcohol, and getting the temperature right, she offers some additional tips that Walker doesn't mention. Try acupuncture. According to a study, this centuries-old practice had a positive effect on 93% of insomnia patients. Sip, or sniff, some lavender. Studies suggest that the herb has a relaxing effect, which can set the stage for a good night's sleep. Huffington writes that in Germany, Lavender tea is an approved treatment for insomnia. You can also try spritzing some lavender onto your pajamas or sheets. Empty your mind. To help you reduce anxiety-producing thoughts, try doing a mind dump before bed. Write down your to-do list for the next day so that your thoughts won't keep you up at night. Improving sleep in society. Walker argues that sleep deprivation goes far beyond individual sleep practices. He says that our society has structurally locked in sleep deprivation in two ways. First, work schedules disrupt sleep. Companies associate hours worked with productivity and tend to see sleep as an indulgence of the week. Second, school schedules disrupt sleep. Early start times disrupt children's circadian rhythms. 
Walker offers ways to improve sleep quality in society. Employers should focus less on hours work than instead implement flexible hours to suit personal circadian rhythms. They can even incentivize sleep with vacation days or bonuses. Use sleep technology to improve sleep tracking and help you adjust your circadian rhythm when needed. Educate the general public about the importance of sleep, in the same way schools have educational programs about diet and drugs. Promote sleep hygiene for hospital patients. Hospitals can replace their harsh lighting and find ways to minimize beeping noises at night. The sleep landscape continues to change with technological advancements that we can use to improve our sleep. In 2021, the FDA approved sleep cognage for medical use. Clinical trials have shown that sleep cognage, a data-supported device, can reduce insomnia in just seven days. In the hospitality industry, where sleep is an essential part of a hotel guest's stay, a scientist predicts some ways in which the experience of sleep will change, including bed covers and sheets made of high-tech thermal regulation fabrics and pillows that can detect sleep activity.